Welcome to Alaska Weather, a production of Alaska Public Media and the National Weather Service, Alaska Region. Produced and broadcast daily from the studios of KAKM, Alaska Weather provides complete forecasts, public, marine, and aviation for all of Alaska. Alaska Weather is made possible by the following sponsors. If you are interested in serving on your local federal subsistence regional advisory council, the deadline to apply is Friday, March 21st. The councils provide information and recommendations to the federal subsistence board on subsistence hunting, trapping, and fishing. For more information on the advisory councils and how to apply, call 1-800-478-1456 or email subsistence at fws.gov. This message sponsored by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Alyeska Pipeline Service Company, Alaska's pipeline to the future, delivering oil today, sustaining operations for tomorrow, committed to safety, operating the 800-mile Trans-Alaska Pipeline since 1977. Cook Inlet Tug and Barge is a marine transportation company specializing in harbor services with a primary marketing focus on the Port of Anchorage, providing their customers with quality-based service specifically tailored to their needs. The National Weather Service. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us here for another edition of Alaska Weather. Taking a look at the uh, satellite imagery, actually you can see the next system out here over the southern Sea of Akutsk having come across uh, Japan there. Front pushing up, already spreading some mid and high level stuff in towards Shimia. Uh, that uh, knocking the winds down and decreasing the snow showers which are all shifted back here to the east over, gosh, just about all the Bering Sea down across the Adak Atka area and on in toward the Alaska Peninsula. Well, this will continue to uh, push on northward and bring uh, a break in the pattern here over the Bering Sea and bring some south and southeast winds into the area and uh, milder temperatures here over the next, uh, well, tonight, tomorrow and through the weekend. On the uh, GOES imagery, you can see the low pressure area starting out just uh, east northeast of uh, Kodiak Island or Kodiak, uh, the state airport there. And as we roll this, uh, moving north and a little bit to the northwest, and then the very strong west northwest winds coming around the bottom of that thing. Uh, when it uh, kicked around to the northwest, gusts as high as 70 miles an hour around Sitkanak there, and very gusty winds as that pulled northward here in this band right through here. Uh, 40 to 60 mile an hour gusts elsewhere across Kodiak Island. Those are all diminishing this afternoon and the whole pattern is shifting northward again. All the very cold Arctic air out over the Bering Sea coming off the ice pass pack there and uh, bringing a lot of uh, snow, especially along the Bering side of the Alaska Peninsula here. Snow showers, brisk northwest winds 15 to 30, 35 miles an hour there over the Unalaska area. And that extends all the way out back out to Adak and Atka, but you can see diminishing both on the winds and snow showers out there over the central Aleutians as that next storm approaches. Uh, some breaks in the clouds here, especially on the lee side of the mountain ranges, the coast range, and up over the northwest interior. Not a whole lot going on uh, up on the north slope, Arctic coast, those areas. Just some variable cloudiness moving through, and uh, that trough swinging through the panhandle brought uh, rain with it, uh, the front right through here. That's moving through a little bit more showery conditions and as the front lifts northward, for example, places like uh, Seward, switching over to snow, a very abrupt change around Homer, the rain and temperatures near 40 earlier today, earlier this morning. And when that front lifted northward and this cold air came back around down into the lower 20s this afternoon with uh, moderate to heavy snow blowing around. So those blizzard conditions lasting at least through this evening and changing over to snow at Cordova. Uh, with that and that'll all be moving northward. Just some uh, pretty good snow in the gusty northwest winds and much colder temperatures out here over the southwest interior areas. A couple of troughs through here swinging down across the peninsula and then this low bringing some snow to the uh, Seward Peninsula, Tin City down to Nome, Golovin and much of this area seen some light snow throughout the day today. And then this portion, the southeast winds bringing uh, milder temperature, temperatures, a wedge of milder air into the mid to upper 30s all the way over to uh, just about, I think, Red Dog Mine, but much colder just to the south there. And that'll all be as well pushing up to the north. 
And for tonight, you'll see that next uh, frontal boundary pushing, uh, making a pretty good stride into the central Aleutians with uh, kicking the winds back up and rain and snow or snow changing over to mixed rain and snow pushing eastward as well. A uh, big drop off in the winds here over the southeast Bering Sea as well as the peninsula becoming quite light to variable to light southwesterlies with still a lingering snow shower to around uh, the greater Nikolsky or in Alaska areas and then quite an area of uh, leftover moisture here over the uh, well from Bristol Bay all the way down to Port Hyden, Pilot Point, uh, Nelson Lagoon and on into Cold Bay uh, but better conditions breaking out a little bit here over Kodiak Island but uh, a lot of this uh, cold air and snow shower condition associated with the upper trough here will be pulling northward. And uh, we've got this band here that will be coming north and bringing some snow, a pretty good shot of snow, anywhere from one to four inches uh, as it comes northward. Already seeing winds gusting to 40 miles an hour, at least up through the forelands now from the south. So there's no doubt it's going to come in. So look for uh, snowfall to increase here over northern Cook Inlet, Anchorage, eventually into Palmer, and especially back uh, up to the north there as you get uh, in the upslope areas on the northern part of the Susitna Valley and the Parks Highway as you uh, head up toward Cantwell and then back toward the range. That'll be where the heaviest amounts will fall and that'll extend back up to the northwest there and then this low with some moisture developing over the Koyukuk Valley areas and maybe the southern slopes of the Burks Range, but tonight staying pretty good up in that area. High pressure, uh, once this thing moves through, some good high pressure will move in. Should result at least some clearing at times tomorrow and then the, this storm down here spreading rain up to the southeast coast. Uh, late tonight and uh, kind of a rain or snow shower condition, probably mostly in the form of uh, snow showers, whatever falls up through this portion overnight tonight and uh, kind of a mixed right on the northern edge of this next moisture field coming up, be kind of a mixture of rain or snow, but uh, basically just rain, continued southeast winds down in that area. And then for uh, tomorrow, as I mentioned, uh, once that trough moves out, uh, the surface one or the main uh, push of moisture, look for high pressure to uh, build into this area, mostly in association and due to the very cold air mass that's shifting eastward off the Bering Sea. But uh, this trough right through here represents the uh, upper air uh, trough axis roughly in this position by tomorrow afternoon. And so on the east side of that, you're going to have this south to north flow. All the cold air and snow showers will may develop into something that should spread some pretty moderate snow showers back up into the Kenai Peninsula. So that will probably possibly be over Kodiak Island early on for some snow showers tomorrow. And then that will pull up to the north and they'll clear out again late tomorrow afternoon around Kodiak, but uh, Seldovia, Homer, Seward looking pretty good to see uh, to go back into the snow showers tomorrow afternoon. Scattered here along the North Gulf Coast. Some of this lingering here over the interior, especially over the mountainous terrain, kind of a uh, counterintuitive pattern going on here, even though we've got higher pressure in over the area. The upper trough is still back to the west and we still have a south to north flow. So some of this moisture will be pretty slow to end, especially here from Iliamna back down to King Salmon. And well, as far down the coastline there is about Port Hyden with some scattered snow showers over the Kilbrook Mountains, snow showers up over the Seward Peninsula. And then this band of snow uh, back uh, from the uh, Selawet, Kobuk Valleys, up to uh, Kotzebue, Kivalina will extend along and south of the Brooks Range there with uh, some pretty good IFR as that uh, pushes up to the northeast. And then uh, rain into uh, the eastern Aleutians tomorrow. So again, starting out as snow, but switching over as the warmer air comes up associated with that warm front. And uh, good solid rain, heavy at times over the southern southeast coast. Now back up here where it's snow, it'll be lighter and not a whole lot of wind with that up in this area. So the uh, definitely the windiest and uh, wettest conditions will be down over the south coast. Looks good for uh, southeasterlies 15 to 30, 35 miles an hour. Possible gale force winds likely there in the south coast, even over the inside waters. But that'll be mostly over Dixon entrance. Then from there, it looks like after whatever snow showers come in to south central Alaska late tomorrow afternoon and evening, specifically along the Kenai Peninsula and extend north, maybe along the uh, Chugach Mountains in the afternoon all the way up to the Talkeetnas. That should be over with by midnight and then the clearing coming in. So it'll be quite a cold morning, uh, Sunday morning here, especially up over the interior, quite cold temperatures. And then that next front rolling right in, uh, bringing uh, snow, possibly uh, moderate to heavy here in the northeast Bristol Bay of Kilbrook Mountain areas. 
and a mixture of precipitation into Kodiak Island and big increase in the winds, looks like gale force winds along the western North Gulf Coast, across the Barren Islands, possibly into Kamishak Bay with uh, maybe a chance of snow as far north as Kenai. Some of that uh, may show up in the Seward area, but just variable clouds and light winds over Prince William Sound and some lingering rain or snow showers over the southeast coast, all in the decreasing mode as those uh, troughs shift off to the east. And then it looks like there's some uh, frontogenesis going on out here with this next uh, pretty impressive low pressure area over the southern uh, bearing tracking eastward. So gusty winds, snow, and low visibility is coming into the central Aleutians. A, a, a lot of snow showers uh, here covering the southwest bearing. All that streaming northeastward will be following this frontal front front in as uh, this spreads up to the northeast uh, Sunday evening and overnight Sunday night. Temperatures today uh, lower 30s out over all of the Aleutians. Pretty uniform out in that area, 30 degrees at Adak, about the same at Atka. 25 in the colder air farther to the east there at uh, Dutch Harbor. St. Paul missing on this chart, but they were up to around uh, 18 or 19 degrees uh, this afternoon as the winds uh, become a little more northwest there and mid-20s along the Alaska Peninsula. And then 17 at Sitkanak to 9 degrees at King Salmon, 0 up to 0 at Cape Newenham and 3 degrees at uh, Macoriak. 42 in Anchorage, but notice the colder temperatures down toward uh, Homer, 23 degrees and uh, 33 over at Cordova. Lower to mid 40s here across the entire southeast coastal areas and lower 40s for the Copper River Basin. Uh, that's um, Nanana at 42, Fairbanks up to 41, otherwise 30s either side of those two locations with 21 over at McGrath and uh, single numbers here over the interior down to near just above zero, minus one at St. Michael, but up to 14 with the snow at Nome. And farther to the north, uh, 21 at Arctic Village, 16 Anatovic. Then here's this milder air spreading 37 degrees up into the uh, Colbuck Valley here, but single numbers back out toward Kotzebue Sound and near or below zero, either side of zero for the Arctic coast. And for the lows tonight, uh, five below to 15 below up in this area, but much warmer above zero on the other side of the mountains there. And then back below zero for the Seward Peninsula. Looks like the Yukon Delta falling, well, 10 to uh, 12 degrees below zero with the uh, zero degree isotherm now down into northeast Bristol Bay. Temperatures falling into the teens and 20s here over south central Alaska, as well as the North Gulf Coast areas. Tanana Valley, temperatures falling to 5 to 15 degrees, mildest over the southeast coast. Not much change out here over the Aleutians. And for the highs tomorrow, uh, upper 30s, lower 40s here for the Panhandle. Uh, 20s, lower 20s across the southern interior to uh, about the same as today here. Uh, below zero for the Yukon Delta, teens to mid 20s there across Bristol Bay, lower 30s to upper 30s into the 40s for the Aleutians, even milder for the Pribilofs and near zero up along the Arctic coast. Flying weather, again with that next uh, system driving eastward here through the Bering Sea, a big area IFR associated with that, spreading into the eastern Aleutians. Uh, first, the central Aleutians tonight heading east-northeast to the Alaska Peninsula by tomorrow afternoon up to the Pribilofs, and then this area here, mostly on the southern slopes of the uh, Brooks Range, but some of that will even get into the north slope late tomorrow afternoon. Marginal conditions back to St. Lawrence Island, and uh, looks like some IFR here hanging on to the southern southeast coast, but better conditions, uh, maybe VFR possibly, but that'll be uh, sliding northward. So I'd expect this uh, to go uh, marginal in the afternoon, in the late afternoon, up toward the White Pass area. And speaking of passes, Anatovic and Adigan, look for occasional IFR conditions, uh, pretty persistent on the southern approaches. And then for the Western Alaska Range, Lake Clark and Merrill, Becoming VFR, but uh, later in the day, some marginal VFR could sneak up southwest of the western entrance of Lake Clark. And for rainy, marginal VFR gradually improving to VFR conditions during the day. So an improvement for this pass as well. Same forecast for the uh, Windy Pass and Isabel marginal becoming VFR. Mentastum marginal becoming VFR. And for Tanita, marginal becoming VFR, but then we'll have to watch this eastern entrance late in the afternoon and see exactly how much moisture is able to stream northward. May go back down to marginal, even VFR by this time tomorrow, or IFR by this time tomorrow, but that's just a possibility. 
Portage uh, IFR becoming marginal to possibly VFR, but again, moisture coming up uh, from the south may switch that around late afternoon and evening. Chilkoot and White gradually becoming marginal, but starting out pretty good. I think it'll be VFR with a gradual downward trend throughout the day and into the afternoon. Freezing levels uh, just off the coast here at the surface and still uh, ways out to the out to sea here from Kodiak and then cutting across the central panhandle and then some milder air pushing northward here toward the central Aleutians, two to four thousand feet and that will uh, kind of expand northward and northeastward throughout the day and into uh, Saturday night. And with that will be some icing mostly in the five to twelve thousand foot range there of the light to maybe moderate rime icing but the moderate area would be more back out here to the west and southwest of that zone but those icing threats increase up toward the Perbolos and expand toward Cape Sarachev. Some spotty icing possible here with that band of moisture up to the north. And then over the southeast coast, of course, that moisture will be spreading northward and with it will be increasing chances of icing. Tomorrow, the upper level low now, right in this area about midday. So there is still a trough back out here to the west and those snow showers getting caught up in that southerly flow there coming back into the coast, possibly mainly only along the Kenai Peninsula and taking a turn back to the west. And for 9,000 feet, uh, 25 to 35 knot winds through this area, pretty light and variable up along the uh, uh, north slope as well as the panhandle. West southwesterly is uh, pretty strong out over the Aleutians, but the strongest winds down to the south, although it looks like 50 knots from the southeast with that low center swinging into the east central Bering Sea. And 30 to 50 knot winds right through this area, taking a turn or becoming westerly behind the front at about 45. Generally high pressure through this area at this level, 3,000 feet for pretty light winds, isolated 25 knots with that low up there and light and variable for the panhandle. And for uh, turbulence, uh, not too bad, just some light mechanical stuff along the North Gulf Coast, a lot heavier out here over the Aleutians spreading up to the Pribilofs. And after hangar flying, I'll be back with the marine forecasts. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Hangar Flying. My name is Mary O'Connor, and I'm filling in for Harry Keeling. I am the secretary of the board of directors of the Alaskan Aviation Safety Foundation, and I also work at the uh, National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. That's my day job, where I manage the aviation safety program. This evening, we are honored to have Ro Bailey back on our show. Ro is the deputy director for the Alaska Center for Unmanned Aircraft Systems Integration, and she's the director of the Pan Pacific Unmanned Aircraft Systems Test Range Complex. We talked a little bit during our last show about the funding, and I think it's important to mention that UAF was chosen to lead the project for one of the six test sites uh, for the UAS, and that's a national um, award that we were given, and I'm very pleased to have Ro talk a little bit about that. Well, thank you, Mary. I'm very happy to be here and to be able to talk about that. It's an enormous honor to be selected to be one of the six test sites. There were 25 applicants, all of whom were very interested in getting one of these with the expectation that they would be in the lead for introducing these uh, new systems into the, into the um, national airspace system. Interestingly enough, though, this isn't one of those federal contracts that people think about where there's buckets of money. Actually, there's no money at all that comes with this. So it's all about the honor, and it's about how we find ways to go find work, which is funded for other reasons, along the same ways that I described in the last show, to uh, be able to fund our work, and then we find ways to incorporate the questions that need answering for the FAA into that work, and then collect the data that way. Of course, if the Federal Congress decides that they want to fund all six of us, we would not turn that down. On our last show, we talked about how the UAS can take over some of the hazardous uh, types of flights mm -hmm. that pilots in Alaska used to be responsible for, mm -hmm. um, such as monitoring sea life and flying low level over large bodies of cold water. When we talk about UAS, one of the issues that comes up is the ability to see them. Can you tell me what you're doing to help pilots prevent mid-air collisions with UAS? 
Well, sure. Um, part of this is going to be the development of specific technologies that will fit on very small aircraft systems. When your aircraft's only two and a half pounds, uh, you can imagine it doesn't produce the ability to lift very heavy equipment nor the power to run that equipment. So miniaturizing things like ADS-B and um, uh, other technologies, even transponders, and then getting that equipment certified by the FAA will be an important step in the long-range effort of being able to have these systems operate safely and effectively within the national airspace system. But in the meantime, while we're doing this testing, we take 100% of the responsibility for ensuring that we don't run into someone else. That's one piece of it. The second part, though, is when we start flying outside of very remote, very restricted areas, we'll be using chase planes, manned chase planes, or we always use ground observers to watch what's going on, and we'll stay within visible line of sight during that period of time. We'll also be doing public outreach to notify people, perhaps through something like hangar flying, as a matter of fact, to uh, let them know that certain activities will be going on in a certain area so that they'll know to look out for that in addition to, of course, the normal things that pilots always look out for. Our number one emphasis in the entire effort is the safety of the national airspace system. As I often tell people, uh, I am one of the flying public. I had over 100,000 miles in the air last year none of them as a pilot. And uh, I certainly do not want to be in the first manned aircraft that gets brought down by an improperly operated unmanned aircraft. So that's our number one, uh, it's our number one goal is to make sure that safety is protected. And how would a pilot flying in Alaska find out if there's going to be UAS testing in the area that they plan to fly? Well, first of all, there will be, uh, we always uh, submit NOTAMs. I realize that's not the easiest system to get through all the time, but there will be NOTAMs. We'll be putting information in local radio broadcasts, local television broadcasts, and uh, we will have a website which is not yet operational, but the website will publish what our flying schedule is uh, every day and hopefully as much as a week ahead of time. That's great information, very helpful for pilots who may be flying to areas that they've flown before, they've been there a hundred times, and maybe they don't check notams or check the weather before they go. So it's very helpful to know uh, what they need to do yeah. and anytime you are welcome to come back to hangar flying and help us let the public know where you're going to be, what you're going to be doing, and when you're going to be doing it. So folks, that's a great opportunity to remember, check those notams before you go flying. <laughs> Even if you're not going to an airport and you're going in airspace that you fly in on a regular basis, check those notams. Until next time, fly safely. Thank you, Ro. Thank you, Mary. Appreciate it. Welcome back. With the next storm moving northward, those gale force winds will be working northward here along the coast, becoming southeast there on the south coast, and possibly gale force winds over the southern inside waters, otherwise small craft advisories or 20 to 25 knots up to the north. And then for uh, Sunday, much lighter winds, uh, northwest 10 to 20 knots, but still pretty brisk down here. Westerly is up to uh, 35 knots. Southwest 30 knots in the southern waters, dropping back to 15 or 20 through here. And then Link Canal could see some southerlies at about 25. For the uh, North Gulf Coast, pretty light variable winds tomorrow, really dropping off. Again, higher pressure across this area at the surface. So light winds, uh, 15 to 20 knots for Cook Inlet, but then coming down to even less than that by this time tomorrow. Light northwesterlies, maybe some higher gusts out of the Copper River Delta, but nothing too serious. For Sunday, swinging around east, 40 knots, so gales ahead of that next front right through this area, dropping back considerably south of the front to 15 knots and trending upward there for the central Gulf Coast, but uh, light and variable throughout most of the day for Prince William Sound on Sunday. For the uh, southwest coast here, or for Bristol Bay, all the way down the Bering Sea side of the peninsula, southwest 20 knots, still some freezing spray at times and southwesterly is 20, becoming westerly at 20 knots and freezing spray as well in those areas. Then for Sunday, uh, southwest 30 knots, uh, coming up to small craft advisory levels. Uh, for most of the peninsula and even Bristol Bay, uh, could see some gale force gusts as that low tracks up toward Cape Newenham, lighter winds though, uh, there southwest of Kodiak. 
And out in the Aleutians, gale force winds just about everywhere here, uh, 30 to 40 knots. Strongest uh, here through the central Aleutians and then on up toward Nikolsky. Southwesterlies at 35 out to the west. And then those uh, become westerly up to 40 knots here as that low up through this area passes eastward. And then they begin to drop off toward Shimia. Uh, 35 to 45 knots, almost storm force winds here. And uh, that'll be dropping back as you get farther away from the low center toward the eastern Aleutians. Along the southwest coast, Southerly's at about 15, maybe up to 20 knots, St. Lawrence Island. Southerly's 25 uh, for the Pribilof, southeast 25, uh, just at least small craft advisories here tomorrow. And then uh, that shifts up to the southwest coast there. Northeasterly's from Nunavak Island northward, southwest 25 south of there. And kind of a variable situation, St. Paul, northeast 15, St. George, southwest 15. Brisk wind advisories up here over the northern Bering Sea. Arctic coast uh, east or east southeast at about 20 knots, northeast at the same speed there for the west side. And south winds, now we have that trough lifting northward here, so southerly winds will be following that in 20 to as high as 25 knots across the Chukchi Sea. And for Sunday, east northeast, 20 knots for the uh, western central Arctic coast. Easterly is now 20 to 25 knots uh, from uh, Cape Lisburn all the way down to Tin City. For tonight, again, this low will be spreading rain up to the panhandle. Got this trough uh, here with a much colder air behind it, swinging a good shot of snow through northern Cook Inlet and into the south central areas, back to the northwest, uh, drying out over the southeast bearing. More rain coming in with that next system on uh, Saturday, tomorrow, and then some snow showers sliding northward along this trough axis uh, right up into the southern Kenai Peninsula. And this is the map for Sunday, more snow in the southwest. Well, have a great weekend, and thanks for joining us. These forecasts are to be used for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go flying. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. Alaska weather is made possible by the following sponsors. The National Weather Service. It's never too early to set expectations and goals for your child's education. The UA College Savings Plan provides opportunities that can help you reach your educational savings goals. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. There is more information available by calling 1-888, the number 4, and then Alaska. This message sponsored by the UA College Savings Plan. If you are interested in serving on your local federal subsistence regional advisory council, the deadline to apply is Friday, March 21st. The councils provide information and recommendations to the federal subsistence board on subsistence hunting, trapping, and fishing. For more information on the advisory councils and how to apply, call 1-800-478 1456 or email subsistence at fws.gov. This message sponsored by U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service.